Today we're gonna to talk about how to secure a Gmail account like a pro. Hey guys, so let's talk about how to secure your Gmail account properly. So there's a lot of good reasons for why you wanna do this. Obvious reasons like your emails are private and you don't want that to be uh, available to anybody, but also your Gmail account is used for all different kinds of things, access to social media, even your email address in and of itself could just be your gateway to social media. So if somebody wants to get access to whatever accounts you have, they can say forgot password. And if they have access to your Gmail account, then they can then um, use that forgot password gateway to get into other systems. So really locking down your Gmail account is important. Uh, the old tried and true methods are make sure you have a strong password and that's still always the case. Make sure you have a strong password. Um, make sure you're using like a two factor system like SMS to your cell phone. But the problem is that uh, SMS to your cell phone today in 2019 is no longer sufficient to uh, actually securing your account. So with uh, 2020 around the corner, let's talk about the new ways of actually securing your Gmail account using a system called uh, like YubiKeys or U2F keys, um, both Google and YubiCo and many others kind of produce keys like these. And I've been using them for a couple of years now and they're great, but there are some things you need to know about how to set them up properly to get the right security and why you don't actually want to use SMS. Uh, and probably I'll just jump on the SMS one now. Um, we're seeing uh, even like mid-level attacks, so not just like really high-level attacks, but just mid-level attacks of uh, SMS hijacking. Uh, the most common way of doing this is just calling up the cell phone provider uh, and em imitating you, and then uh, getting that phone number ported to a new SIM card. So an attacker might call my cell phone provider, give them my details and say, hey, I'm Tristan and I you know, lost my cell phone and I have a new SIM card, please put the number on this new SIM card. And so it's just social engineering, it's relatively easy to do that if you have the right information. And then now that SIM card is now on a different phone. And now when they go to log into your Gmail account, if they know the username and password, uh, then they can get the SMS code and then they're in the account. So having it just a two factor on your cell phone is not sufficient. Using a Google Authenticator, which is also very popular and I'll show you how to do that, um, is, is good. It's much better than SMS in my opinion, uh, but uh, the codes can still be a part of your like uh, cell phone backups or something like that. So there are still ways of getting like Google Authenticator or as some kind of other Authenticator codes out of the system. It's harder, but it's not foolproof. Something like a physical key is really, really great. And I don't recommend it for everything, but some of your core like key products, especially like your Gmail or something is really, really important to do. So let's go to the computer and actually see how we would set up one of these devices and how to set up your Gmail account properly so that even with uh, a physical key or if you're using some of the lesser secure stuff like SMS, um, that you're still secure. There's some settings in there that you're gonna wanna check out. So let's go to the computer and see that now. So let's take a look at uh, YubiKey's website first. I just wanna show you a couple different models that they have and then I'm gonna show you how to set up your Gmail account with your token. So if you just look up uh, YubiKey, it's actually done by a company called YubiCo. And so it's yubico.com and then here are their products. Just a quick high level overview because uh, there are some different versions of them. Um, it's the YubiKey 5 series are the ones that I've had the most experience with. Uh, they're just a lot more feature rich and they have a couple different things that I prefer to use. If you want to go with a budget option, you could do the $20 kind of security key series. Um, they have others that are more for enterprises, but don't worry about those right now. So I would just do a YubiKey 5 series. Um, if you look at them here, there's a couple different options that you can have. So I'm gonna show you the YubiKey A ones that we have, but I've got a whole bunch of them. Um, you can do, this one's kind of interesting with the Lightning and the C. I, I prefer just doing the USB Cs and then you can actually plug them into your mobile devices and you can get the codes that way. Um, but I'm gonna show you on the computer how you can get the codes out, but and you just install an app on your phone, you can plug it into your phone and get the codes that way as well. Um, and then of course you have these little micro guys and this is if they have to stay in your computer all the time. I do have the USB C uh, micro one. Um, it's just, a, it's a really, really small one. It sits in there, it doesn't take up much space. There's pros and cons to leaving it into your computer all the time. It really depends on how you're using them. I personally wouldn't really recommend that. I'd recommend getting one of these keychain ones, stick it on your keychain or stick it in your backpack or wherever you're going all the time and uh, having it connect. Another option, if you see this UB, this Y with um, a little bit of a wireless wave on it, so uh, in, you'll see here, there's like a, a disc token and then there's like some wireless waves. If you get one of those, it actually has NFC. So that's kind of nice if you are connecting it to your cell phone. If you don't want to actually plug it into the jack, you can just kind of hold it up to the back of the cell phone. And, and if your most iPhones and Androids have NFC now and you install the app and it'll read the codes that way. I have one, I've used it. 
I don't find it works great. I prefer to just kind of plug it in. I get a little concerned about, uh, you know, NFC being able to be picked up as well. So, there's, you know, you're using this for security. So do you really want it broadcasting? It's your choice, but they do have that wireless option. Keep in mind this disc, we're gonna talk about it, is these ones, they're just capacitive touch. They're not actually fingerprint touch or anything like that. So it's just kind of like pushing a button that's not a mechanical button, it's just capacitive touch. Um, and that's just to, uh, to tell the key, hey, like start passing authentication information. Uh, so if you leave it plugged into your computer all the time, you don't have to, um, somebody can't just put a virus on the computer and get the security keys. You have to physically be present and tap the button. So it's kind of nice that way. Anyway, so here's the products. They're not very expensive. Um, like I said, they were all under $100 as far as I've seen the basic ones. So if you don't go to the the enterprise level kind of crazy ones. Uh, and these provide lots and lots and lots and lots of security. And they provide a lot of features besides what I'm just gonna show you today. Uh, today, we're just gonna talk about how to secure your Gmail account well. Um, so let's get started on that. So I have a demo Gmail account, let's log in. And um, you can see it's a, it's a brand new account. This is all kind of your typical stuff. And I'm gonna turn on multi-factor authentication. So you go into your account settings and we're gonna go to security. And let's go ahead and turn on two-step verification. But before we do that, let's check a couple things here. One, you can use your cell phone to sign in and you can also set them up as recovery options, right? So you have your recovery phone and you have your recovery email address. If you put your recovery phone number in here and or your recovery email address in here, that can lower the security perimeter of your Gmail account. So consider whether or not you wanna put those in there. Not putting them in there and then you lose your two-step uh, items means you could lose the account. Uh, having the recovery items in there could mean that if hackers get access to those recovery items, they could potentially get access to your Google account. So um, it's kind of a, a what's right for you. There's no there's no solid option. Uh, today we're gonna walk through how to really, really lock it down as pretty much as tight as reasonably possible. And um, and then if you lost your two stop your two factor items, you would lose the account. But I'm gonna show you some ways to to, to protect against that practically without hackers. Um, without lowering your, your attack surface, sorry, without increasing your attack surface by hackers. That's what I'm trying to say. All right, so let's get started on your two-step verification. So click your two-step verification, click get started. The, um, it's gonna ask for your password. <clears throat> so the first thing it's gonna tell you to do is like, let's set up your phone and it's gonna try to set you up with text messaging. Again, we don't wanna do this. This is not a really great method. It's same thing for phone calls. Um, you know, it's relatively easy nowadays to hijack SIM cards. And we're seeing this being done uh, uh, with a regular uh, frequency enough to say, don't do this. So choose another option. We're gonna do the security key option. Okay, so we're gonna take this key and we're gonna plug it into the computer. And then I'm gonna tap that gold disc on, on that key that I showed you earlier. And then Chrome's gonna pop up and say, do you want to allow this disc to be read, right? Or sorry, do you want this key to be read? So you hit allow, and then now it's registered with your Google account and you can call this key, whatever you wanna call it. So I'm gonna call it key 01. So one nice thing here is you can actually add multiple keys. You can see that here. So if I wanted to, I can add another one. I can add a second key. I can put this in a safe or something like that. And now that's one way I can protect myself against losing access. I can buy two keys, I can put one in a safe, I can carry one with me, and if the one that's with me gets lost or whatever it is, I can go back to you, this one and get access to the account. So that's one way to create backup accounts. But you have to buy two keys. I mean, they're not super expensive, but maybe you don't wanna do that. So another option is you can set up your backup codes. So you should do this anyway, so go ahead and hit set up. It's gonna show you your backup codes, and you go ahead and print those. And uh, what I'd recommend is just print those, again, put them in your safe, put them somewhere um, that is, is a safe place to put them. And then again, if you lose your, your key, that you would use these backup codes to get access to your account. So you've done that, now you have backup codes. And you've done all of this without um, increasing your attack uh, surface area by hackers. So another option, this is the way I prefer to do it. Um, let me just show you how to log in and you'll see why I prefer this. So I'm gonna totally sign out of my account. And so I'm gonna sign in, here's my username, here's my password. And then now it says it wants a security key prompt. So if I go over to the disk, I plug it in, and I press that gold, that gold disk on it, it now authenticates onto this computer. I can say don't ask again on this computer and that will exempt it for a little while. Um, so that's up to you whether or not you trust your computer enough that it's, that it's not being used. But say it's a public computer, you're going to the library or whatever, you would not wanna check that box off. Hit next, and then now you're into your account. 
The number one reason why I don't like using it that way is because um, if I want to if I want to plug into a computer, let, let's say I have the USB C UB key, right? Which I have one here. So here's the USB C UB key. Um, if I go to somebody else's computer and I want to plug in and log in, and they don't have USB C, I can't do that. Or if I have a USB A, but they don't have a spare port or whatever it is, it gets a lot of con little convoluted. Um, so I don't really like it for those reasons. Another reason why I don't like it is I use a lot of virtual machines, right? So I use cloud computers, uh, all different. I'm in all different kinds of environments all the time. And so passing these these Yubi keys down to virtual machines just doesn't work very well. Um, and and so it just it's just not perfect that way. So my preferred method of using these keys is not the the Google kind of default way, which we just showed you. Um, you can use those if you like, it's nice and secure. But uh, here's an alternative that I find works better, especially for setting up on mobile devices. So here it's prompting me again, I hit the gold disk, and it logs me into the account. So let's go ahead and set up the authenticator app. And remember I said, if you set this up on your phone, um, you know, your phone could get compromised or could your, your private keys could be stored in backups, things like that, and it's not a great way to do it. Uh, but you can actually store this on the YubiKey. So if you buy the YubiKey Series 5s and you scan this QR code, you can actually store it onto the key. So to do that, you just go to yubicode.com and you go support, downloads, and then here you're gonna see a YubiKey, or sorry, YubiCo Authenticator. Okay, so I already have the YubiKey uh, Authenticator installed on my computer, so I'm gonna open that up. And here it is, it says insert your YubiKey, I've inserted it, and it says there's no accounts uh, on the key. So let's go back to the two-step verification, here's the QR code. And so from the YubiKey, or YubiCo Authenticator, you can go ahead and hit add, it scans the QR code, and it gives you kind of the name of, you can change you know, this information around, and you can go ahead and hit add. And then now, this is the code. So if I double tap it, and then I tap the, the gold key, it gives me the verification code. So I can go ahead and copy that, paste it in, done. So that's my preferred method for logging in because then I can go to any computer or um, my cell phones or anything like that, and I can use that authenticator system. But again, here's the YubiKey authenticator. If I pull the key out, there's no there's no way of getting that anymore. The private key is stored on this physical key. And uh, also, if I plug it into my cell phone, I could, there's a YubiKey Authenticator app on my cell phone, and then I can also see the codes that way. So that's my preferred method, rather than the, you know, you kind of plug it in and it just automatically authenticates. For instance, some browsers don't support it. Some VM, like passing down to VMs can be very, very challenging. Using it on, on other people's computers, like they may have the A port or the C port, or they may not have free ports or whatever it is. Um, I just I just find it a bit of a pain, right? But if I have if I have a key that's compatible with my cell phone, so let's say like the USB-C one, I can plug it into the, to the bottom of my cell phone, I can load the YubiKey Authenticator app, and then I can get the code, just as if I was using the Google Authenticator or some kind of other Authenticator. But there's nothing stored on my cell phone, it's all stored on this physical key. Um, and then the best part, again, if you lose this key, then you just go ahead and log in through your backup codes, you can revoke the key access, and then um, you're, you're done. So that's kind of the way that I would suggest setting this up. I would definitely suggest doing a security key login. I would suggest doing an authenticator app login, but using the Yubico authenticator and then having your backup codes as well um, and then store that in a secure place. If you wanna take it a step further, if you're really concerned about losing your stuff, then you could um, buy a second key and add that and then put that into again, a secure place, give it to a friend, whatever you wanna do um, and go from there. So. In this case, I'm very, very happy with how this is secured. Um, you basically have to have a security key or one of those backup codes to get access. If I don't have any one of those, this account should not be accessible. Um, barring Google allowing you access some other way, um, I can't see how you would get through to this account using those security measures. Uh, again, keep in mind if you use recovery phone, recovery email, that might protect you if you lose your products, but it also uh, increases the attack surface for hackers to use. Okay, so let's recap the security settings that we have. So we have the two-step verification. If we click into here, uh, then you'll be able to see that we have the YubiKey set up, we have the Authenticator uh, app set up, and we've got the backup codes. So I'll just quickly throw this one in. 
Oh, that was the wrong key. Actually, we're gonna use the other key. Perfect. So here's the setup. Like I said, you have the one security key. You can add a second key if you want. You have the Authenticator app, which is actually not an Android app. It's using the YubiKey Authenticator. So again, it's still stored on that physical key. And then we have the backup codes, which you stored in a safe place. Um, we have not added anything else. That way, uh, it, it keeps the account as secure as possible. Uh, but also keep in mind, if you lose your YubiKey and you lose your backup codes, you would have lost access to the account. So you wanna make sure you keep those separate, but in safe places. And with that, our Gmail account is secure. Okay, so hopefully that information's helpful on how you can secure your Gmail accounts. Uh, really, really, really look at your Gmail account. Consider the security settings that I've recommended and others that are out there. Um, first and foremost, have a strong password. Definitely make sure it's a strong password. Try to make it unique that it's not used for anything else. Uh, even a passphrase is better, so a sentence, rather than um, just like a password and some characters or something like that. Uh, but then also go a step further and look at your multi-factor. Uh, so SMS, Google Authenticator, using a YubiKey or some kind of uh, physical token. Uh, depending on what the impact is to you, really consider locking that stuff down. So hopefully that's helpful. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Um, and uh, if you have any comments about what I recommended, please put them in, in below. I'd love to see those. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.